section in 1958. And um, then you jump to 1960 when Elvis was out of the Army. Uh, my dad stopped by Graceland a couple of times for some little Army newsletter tidbits, and he met uh, one of Elvis's uncles. Uh, who was a guard at the gate, and um, Elvis's uncle invited my parents to the movies once with Elvis. Uh, Elvis would rent out the theater and take, uh, you know, various uh, friends and family members, and and then later um, my parents were also invited to the fairgrounds. And when uh, my parents went to the fairgrounds that night, they were allowed to bring their children, and other people were bringing their kids. And so my siblings and I went to the fairgrounds. This was, I believe, around 1960. And uh, I, I remember meeting Elvis. Uh, I was five years old, and he patted me and my sister Terry on our head. <laughs> <laughs> but that was the very first meeting, <laughs> actual meeting. <laughs> but then you had to jump to, to the year 1976, and... Yeah. Uh, my sister Terry uh, then was Miss Tennessee, and uh, we received a phone call at our home uh, from a f- friend of Elvis's, George Klein, who was a local disc jockey in Memphis, and he said that Elvis uh, was interested in meeting the new Miss Tennessee. And so on that evening, it was November of 1976, uh, my sister Rosemary and I accompanied my sister Terry, and, and we met Elvis uh, that November, and uh, things changed for me after that night. Yeah, it, it was... Um... I would. I don't know if I could say love at first sight, but boy, he was attracted to you from from the start, wasn't he? From that night on. Well, I was certainly attracted to him. Yeah, <laughs> as, oh, well. sure. as a I was, girl, I would imagine. You know, I have to set up. Yeah, you know, anyone that knew me, I was a very shy person, and you know, I didn't I didn't talk a lot, but I was just you know I was very quiet, and uh, but I thought he was gorgeous. We were. Uh, uh, the night that we actually went to Graceland, and I said, for my, you know, I had grown up in Memphis, and for my siblings and I, it was like going going to the White House, you know, to meet the president. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were taken on a little tour when we first got. Uh, we were told that Elvis was practicing karate, and uh, we were eventually taken upstairs to his daughter Lisa's room. And uh, I just remember that Elvis came walking in and wearing this little karate outfit, and uh, I just looked at him and I blurted out, you know, "Hi, Elvis!" Like I'd known him for years, and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, someone must have told, uh, you know, to- told him who each of me and my sisters were because he shook our hand and called us each correctly by our names. And so, uh, uh, but that night he was quite the gentleman and, and fun, outgoing, very down to earth. And uh, but at a point in the evening, he said, "Ginger, you're burning a hole right through me." And I was like, "Who me?" You know, I was embarrassed. I thought, you know, he thinks I'm staring at him. And uh, uh, he goes, "Yes, you." And but he ended up taking us on a tour of his upstairs, you know, uh, at his home. And, and uh, that night, I from that night on, we started to see each other. Mm. You know, Ginger, throughout your whole book, and I, I can't stress this enough to our listeners, we're speaking with Ginger Alden, by the way. The name of the book is Elvis and Ginger. Um, you made it so clear that Elvis was, he had a heart of gold. He was just a wonderful, wonderful person. Oh yeah, he he, uh, you know, generous to a fault with so many people. Um, uh, you know, after Elvis passed away, I mean, uh, you know, it wasn't just my family he was generous with. I mean, I found out he had given maids and nurses and doctors and close friends, uh, you know, bought them new homes and cars. And uh, uh, after Elvis and I were going out, he wanted me closer to Graceland, and he wanted me to have. I actually shared a room with my sister Terry, and my parents had had just uh, purchased a new home just a few months earlier that year. And uh, when Elvis wanted something, he really pursued it, and uh, he was adamant about it. They kept bringing up throughout the course of our relationship. You know, he wanted me to have my own room, and then it transferred over into my parents having a new home, and he even went with us one night, set up a whole uh, uh, meeting with a realtor to look at a, a home, and, and uh, just had a heart of gold and deep, deep concern for so many others, which was such an admirable quality of his. Oh, was it ever? And uh, I, another thing I... I noticed through reading with the book um well you uh had a big on family values and so was elvis huh i mean that i can see why you two were attracted to each other in that sense as well once you got to know each, know each other family was big well, wasn't it he, uh, yeah you know you know you, you look at elvis he had uh my goodness cards at the gate were his uncles he had stepbrothers you know on his staff that were hired as employees his grandmother lived in his home his aunt his father he had had a home built for his father close by and he understood you know family and um uh you know i was close to my family and elvis took them on as his own and you know they were all given his famous pcb tlc necklaces and um 
you know, he under he understood that, and uh, you know, but we shared also. Uh, my my mother, her father had been a, a minister um, when she was a young child, and um, she had been inspired by both of her parents. And my mother played a lot of gospel music on our piano, and she was very quite musically talented herself. She could play guitar and mandolin, and I played a little guitar. And my sister was a great classical pianist. But I remembered standing behind my mother many times, and while she played gospel hymns, and you know our whole family would kind of come in and sing. And uh, Elvis uh, had an organ in his uh, office upstairs at Graceland, and he would play the organ many times for me and sing. And uh, so it felt a little like home, you know, as he as he did that. But uh, you know, we shared spiritual interests. He read many many books, and uh, you know, we both loved good Southern food and. <laughs> I loved the good motorcycles, and, and uh, so, yes, we had quite a few things in common. Yeah, Ginger, I learned something about Elvis uh, by reading your book as well. He he was such a deep, deep thinker, and I think, I don't know why, but some people might be surprised to hear that. He was very into numerology, and he was always, had a million yeah. books that he wanted to share with you. I think that's something a lot of people don't real about, realize about Elvis. Well, here you have this rock and roll icon. I remember the very first night I met him, and, and uh, my sisters actually were, they weren't sent home, but they were given the option when he had kind of singled me out, and I end up sitting, he was quite the gentleman, I end up sitting in his bed with him at Graceland, and he, he we were going over books on numerology, and I remember there was a large book uh, that he pulled out, and it reminded me, my mother had a giant, uh, this old family Bible, and there were all these beautiful illustrations in it, and this book had a, what Elvis told me uh, symbolized God, and there was this man sitting on this large throne with a long white beard, and uh, 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 the symbols of fire, ice, wind, and rain were at his sides. And uh, you know, that's, uh, Elvis talked about this for hours with me, and was pointing out, and you know, uh, I'd ask a few questions, and I was blown away that this was what he was interested in at this point in his life uh, with me, and he was on a very serious spiritual quest, certainly. Mm. I'd like to quote something you wrote in your book. I, I think it's so telling to how how great of an author you were and how it was what made it so much more enjoyable. You wrote, "I felt stunned that he would give me gifts so early in our relationship, and unsettled that everything seemed to move so fast with him. I wondered if Elvis did this sort of thing with women on a regular basis, or whether he was serious about wanting me to belong to him." Ginger, you wrote what so many of us would think, what the normal person would think. You really put yourself out there, and that's so appreciated as a reader. You know, you, you, you didn't sugarcoat things. You were, it's obviously a loving relationship, but you weren't afraid to share with us your doubts at, at the beginning. Well, I wrote, uh, you know, I didn't want to write it from my age now, and it was when I sat down and I pieced together all the things I had written down, as I said, shortly after he passed away, and it was, uh, the feelings were so strong and still there, and to relive it and go moment by moment, and I would hope to put the reader in the room with me, and, uh, you know, I, I thought it was fair to write it as a 20-year-old. Mm -hmm. and was that experience and that first time you know I stepped in, in the front door of Graceland was that tough Ginger uh, years later saying to yourself you know reading what you had written as a 20 year old your thoughts saying and did you say I, I can't I can't write that now I'm, I'm so much older and wiser not older but I'm, I'm, I'm wiser now was it tough to just <laughs> go <the> back <laughs> listen I have a few years on you Ginger so you're, you're not old believe me <laughs> Um, but was it was it tough just to to keep the things your thoughts from as a twenty year old? Like, did you ever um, want to edit yourself yeah, you know, and say, it, it "I can't was, say that"? You know, there were such the special, exciting moments um, to relive, and uh, you know, I had written down exact sentences that he said, and I remembered them so clearly, and and reliving it, and and, and trying to put the, as I said, trying to put the reader in that moment. And then, um, you know, for those who will read the book, there were some very emotional times I had to write about um, uh, because I felt it was fair. You know, I didn't want to sugarcoat and to put the truth in. But mm -hmm. um, that's the thing that's been the hardest for me is there were exaggerated things. There were things that people didn't understand or what was going on behind closed doors. And, um, and I had to write truthfully my journey as a 20-year-old young woman um, 
you know, how I tried to help Elvis at times and tried to understand, you know, his ways. And he wanted me to learn so much about him. And, and, you know, I fell in love with him deeply. And it was just this whirlwind romance. And he was consuming my life. And, and, but it ended all too quickly, unfortunately. And, uh, uh, you know, but I had to write my journey and I wrote it as honestly as I could. And, and, uh, and I hope that the reader, you know, would, would walk away with a better understanding of our relationship. Uh, well, d- d- do we ever? Um, yeah, I, I, I want our listeners to know, for those that don't know, uh, you were 20 years old, Elvis was 42, yet he seemed to always have this teenager's love for life. Is that fair? Well, yeah, you know, it, it's 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 funny. Um, you know, he loved to joke around. He would do small practical jokes. You know, he liked McDonald gift certificates to friends. You know, yes, he rode motorcycles. He rode three-wheelers. You know, he, he'd be like a big kid if he got on his daughter Lisa's golf cart and riding in behind the horses. And, you know, it was like there was no medium with Elvis. He either went too slow or too fast. You know, there was no <laughs> like in between. Um, but, uh, you know, when when we were together, there was more, uh, you know, I didn't think of our age difference, really. Um, I, I felt Elvis was a little more fatherly. He loved teaching. He, he loved showing me new things and, and taking me new places. And, and uh, But he was more fatherly toward me when we were reading, and he was always trying to teach me, you know, certain things. But... Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, I had heard stories, you know, before he met me, they used to have, um, what was it, fire, what, what do you call the uh, fireworks uh, rocket, they would shoot at each right. other and things like that, that's definitely a teenage uh, side. I didn't witness that in our time together, but uh, I would certainly say he did have that teenager's lust for life. <laughs> mm. You know, you, you mentioned um, Lisa Marie. Um, you had a very, very nice relationship with Lisa Marie. Uh, Elvis's daughter. Could, could we talk about that a bit? Could you tell us a little bit about Lisa Marie? And she actually referred to you as her second mommy sometimes. Sure. You know, um, you know, I wrote. Uh, Lisa was was independent. She knew she was Elvis's daughter. I wish there had been more time to get to know her better. I mean, she would come. She would. She was at Graceland more that last summer. But she was on tour a few times, and we were both getting to know each other, and, and uh, I wrote about the, the times I, I took her when I first met her in Las Vegas, and I took her shopping one day and hoped she would, would like me, and, and uh, yes, when she found out uh, that uh, you know my, my ring that Elvis had given me was an engagement ring, she called me mommy. She didn't walk around the house calling me mommy. No, no, no. Get the wrong precious. I've heard some people say, you know, Lisa was calling her mommy all the time, and that's not true. It was this one time, and the next morning even, that she said mommy, and she giggled, and she came in the room, and, uh, you know, because Elvis had waited to uh, tell her about the in- engagement, you know, and I, I won when the time was right for him, and I felt that was, you know, his thing, that wanted him to feel comfortable with that. But she was a sweet girl. I just wish there had been more time for us to be together as well. Yeah, how, how long were you uh, with Elvis, you know, when you first started going out and his very untimely death? It, it was just, just under, just shy of nine months. Yeah. I met him in November 19, 1976, and we were together till uh, August 16, 1977. Yeah, and you, you were engaged to be married on Christmas, is that correct? Uh, well, we, we, uh, yeah, plan- we became engaged on January January 26, but we had set a wedding date uh, and yeah. decided uh, Elvis had asked me... Um, uh, you know whether I wanted uh, his birthday, my birthday, and you know, or Christmas. And I remember, you know, I said Christmas would be nice, and he goes, "That'll be our gift to God." Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, in retrospect, I should have picked my birthday; it was sooner. But I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, listen, <laughs> hindsight is twenty twenty. That was okay. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> with um, another telling thing about how how really thoughtful Elvis was, I know a couple of times, and on YouTube, it's a couple of uh, things when Elvis would introduce you. Uh, during one of his concerts uh, as my girlfriend. Uh, and there are a couple of times he, oh, he didn't introduce you as his fiance, and that's because he hadn't told Lisa Marie yet. And yeah, I, I just think it's so telling about the type of person that Elvis was that he wouldn't, you know, that he was so appropriate all the time. Well, he was very protective of our relationship, and, uh, you know, I don't think he knew what the, how the press would react, and, you know, he wasn't ready. You know, when the time was right for him, he was going to do it, and he was very guarded with that, and I was just thrilled that he had announced me, and I was, uh, you know, this was when he <laughs> was being filmed for a CBS special. and I remember uh, watching was, that, yeah. Was, yeah, 
and I was he knew I was shy about it and you know you just couldn't tell sometimes you knew if he was going to introduce you but uh, sometimes many most times you didn't and if you saw him walking a certain way it was like uh oh is he going to do it or not <laughs> <laughs> and, and but, you were, uh, yeah you know he, he would sorry no no I was just going to say that you would also um, view some of the shows right from the stage as well that, that what was that like Ginger knowing that Elvis well, knew you was, were there he wanted you on stage and rhetorical question but no, I, I, it was great. I remember the first show I saw, I believe it was uh, 